All right, guys, going to go through Acts chapter 3, and I'm, there's 28 chapters in Acts, and I'm thinking about trying to do 14 a day, get through 14 today. Hopefully, that's a goal, and then maybe 14 tomorrow. Anyways, the lame beggar healed. So we talked about, you know, the initial, um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit with the apostles, and how a lot of Jews were converted in one day, and then uh, all the apostles and all the believers in that area kind of gathered together and continued together in prayer and everything, and um, reading the scriptures and spreading the gospel. And so here we got, uh, we're continuing on from that, and Acts chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. And so, um, to ask for aid or, uh, you know, whatever food or money or whatever they could help with this guy is what I'm guessing. Uh, this guy who was born lame. Verse 3 who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked of an alms. And fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. This is an amazing miracle, you know, just it um, kind of mirrors the miracles of Jesus, except for Jesus did the miracles by his own power, and um, the apostles did the miracles by the power of Jesus, by the power of God. So there's that difference, that distinction there, and um, but it's an awesome story. Um, and, again, I just think of the Pentecostals, you know, there's so much of that with Acts that they think, uh, you know, there's a lot of questioning, can can we perform these kind of miracles in the name of Jesus today and have people healed? And uh, I definitely think that we should pray for healing and we should pray for, you know, many things, and I have, and I do, but... Um, you know, this just makes me think of people like Benny Hinn, where, you know, he gets a lot of people on stage who are sick and disabled, and, you know, he uh, tries to replicate these things uh, in the scriptures, these miracles, and he tells people, you know, rise and walk to, to people who are in wheelchairs and stuff, and they might get up with some help and walk for a little bit, and, you know, say, it's a miracle, and, uh, you know, they're never really healed, and um, he's just a con artist. And so there's a lot of people that take these things and um, use them and abuse them. Um, and, uh, you know, so, you know, I just think probably what a lot of people think um, that these miracles and stuff were just for that time, uh, basically, that the apostles, you know, were, were gifted with these miracles, these, you know, there were these signs and wonders to um, convert people, you know, basically the Jews at the beginning of the church. Um, so I don't think that pertains so much to today, um, but at the same time we should be praying for miracles. I don't think that we should be going up to people in wheelchairs and things like that and saying, you know, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk and stuff. And so it's not that, you know, God doesn't heal people today or that miracles don't happen today. But I don't think, I think that 
you know, that was like a special empowerment for, you know, the apostles, certain people for a certain time. And, uh, it's not just explaining it away like that. I just think that's, I think that's how it was. Uh, Peter speaks in Solomon's portico. And I don't know what a portico is, what, I don't know. It's porch. That's what it says in verse 11. I don't know. Acts 3.11, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Verse 13 says, The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his Son, Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, title for Jesus, the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof ye are witnesses in his name through faith in his name and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And so that's kind of interesting too, so I'm thinking is, you know, the faith of this, uh, the slain beggar, it was through his faith that he was healed, is basically what he's saying. You know, that's what Jesus said to others, through your faith you were healed. And so, um, you know, it's not like he just healed an unbeliever, I guess. I guess when he said, you know, I guess this, uh, this beggar was, was willing to receive, um, this healing and, um, in the name of Jesus. Um, so I don't know. And so, you know, and so also, you know, the healing and a lot of the miracles that Jesus did, you know, were to prove spiritual points and stuff. And so it was not, it was, you know, he did heal this man and the man was very grateful for it, but it was also, um, for a witness, you know, to Christ and, and, and so other people would see this and, you know, hopefully be converted in his name. Okay. So I read that. And now, brethren, I would that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shown, had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, and that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So Christ was spoken of in the scriptures. Uh, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the full times of restoration of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto him, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, 
and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So he's speaking to the Jewish people again. He's saying, he's telling them to repent. You know, a lot of them knew of Jesus, but they rejected him as the Son of God. And he's, he's again saying, you know, uh, you need to realize that he is the Son of God. This miracle was performed, you know, because of his power. He was risen again, even though, you know, he was crucified. He was spoken of in the scriptures. And to turn to him, and uh, so it makes me think, too, interesting. Something that I want to read, uh, I was thinking maybe the next book that I want to read through is this book by Greg Bonson that has to do with apologetics. And um, I don't even remember what it's called. Top of my head, but okay, Always Ready. It's called Always Ready, and I know that he goes over one of the chapters in Acts. I don't know if it was chapter 2 or whatever. But he talks about presuppositional apologetics, basically, you know. There's this debate of, you know, presuppositional versus, you know, evidence, apologetics, I don't know what what that's called, classical or whatever. Um, But, you know, presupposing is, you know, saying, you know, God does exist and that's why this is this way. And, And, you know, when you're witnessing other people, when you're having debate or whatever else with non-believers, but then there's the evidential side where where they point to evidence and there's kind of a debate of you know uh one way's wrong and the other way's right or you know or 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 both ways right or whatever but it does seem that you know I do see both in scripture I think I think that I can see him appealing to to evidence um I see you know Peter in his sermon appealing to evidence and appealing to evidence here the miracles the scriptures but anyway there are some interesting things here that I've kind of skipped over as I've read and I probably talked about before but You know, a lot to do with the futurism and stuff like that. You know, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. See, people, this futurism, dispensationalism stuff, they believe in the millennial kingdom. They think the millennial kingdom is like the earth restored. So they understand this to mean that Jesus is in heaven until the millennial kingdom. But that's not what it means. Um... So, I mean, basically, Jesus is in heaven for eternity. And, uh, so how to understand that, I don't know. I've probably went over that before, but I'll, I'd have to think about that more. We see repentance, repent therefore and be converted. And, um, you know, repentance is all over in Acts. But anyway, I'm just going to move along. And uh, some good stuff here, though. The man is healed, and it's kind of like another sermon. And uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I don't know if this is really how it comes across, but it's like, uh, you know, the Jew, like the guy's healed and everything, and then the Jews are kind of like in awe and wonder, like, ooh. And he's like, well, why are you, like, why are you in awe and wonder, you know? Like, you should have known this, like. You murdered Jesus, you know, and now you need to get right. <laughs> kind of like, like, wow, okay, uh, bringing the hammer down on him. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to continue. That was kind of a shorter chapter, so, compared to the second one. All right, on well, to chapter four, God bless.